Hello there! Do you want to be a VTuber? Specifically a 2D VTuber? Can you draw? <gasps> well, you're in luck! Buckle up, Buttercup, and cancel your Adobe subscription because we will be going to the world of open source to draw your very own VTuber model. I have an outline that we will be going through step by step. I will show you where to download legitimate versions of all the open source software because even though it's free, scams can and do run rampant still. I'm not sponsored by any open source software. I just love these programs so much. The link to all of the downloads are in the description below. If you already have your own PSD file for rigging, feel free to skip this part of the model making process. Otherwise, stick around, get that pen tablet running, and let's get started. Step 1. Download Krita. Now, I haven't touched GIMP in ages, but last time I did, it didn't track pen pressure at all or track which part of the pen I was using. That is one of the many reasons why I use Krita. It is actively maintained, has frame-by-frame -frame animations, vector tools, PSD exporting as an option, and most importantly, layers! Like onions! and layer opacity, and a reference tool, and grouping layers, RGB and CMYK, and a whole palette that you can customize, and it can work with my pen tablet perfectly. Did I mention the brushes? I didn't mention the brushes, did I? Watercolor, paints, pixels, pencils. Don't just download this for your avatar. Download it for your own art projects. Before we begin putting pen to canvas, let's talk about canvas size. Canvas size matters in VTubing. A good, huge canvas size will make even the most zoomed in instances still look crisp and not super pixely. This is why I recommend at least 2000 by 2000. Not too big for your RAM, not too small for tracking and zooming, just right for making pictures in our rigging app. I will be making my model today at 2400 by 2400. And it will be another version of my current design. And it'll be an Eno Chibi. Uh, 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 uh. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Alright. I'll see myself out. Another thing about your model is design. Whether elaborate or simple, make sure to have a reference of some sort. Maybe you made a full body PNG tuber avatar before. Great. Use it as a reference if you don't want to change it. There is a reference icon in the tools section, and in tool settings, you can choose your reference, whether a sheet or a transparent PNG. Move to your desired spot, and we're ready to go. Step 2. Sketch layer. One cool thing about Krita I didn't find out until too late was a symmetry button. There is both vertical and horizontal symmetry. If you want your avatar to have the usual standing in front and looking at the viewers, use the horizontal symmetry button to help draw. Note that this only works out of the box for .kra files for some reason. You could drag the symmetry line, but I don't recommend it right now until we get to the mount. If your hair is asymmetrical, you can always turn off the symmetry. Don't forget to use different colors to sketch if you need to, turn down opacity if you need to, and make a layer that helps with finding out if all the pieces are colored in when we get to step three. Pieces, pieces, pieces. People approach this step differently. Some people simply draw and color the model like they would a typical picture and then cut it. I find that to be utterly terrifying for my perfectionistic brain. I draw each piece separately with the help of the symmetry tool. I cut out the other half of the layer when I need to like with hair or eyes. So, depending on how complex your model is, either method will give you tons of work. But say it's a simple or an Eno Chibi. You have saved me the hassle of piecing each individual strand of hair. Nice! What you'll want to do for symmetry's sake is create layers for the line art and coloring separately. When you line, color, and shade, merge the layers together. Though so you could also have the shading be a separate layer. I don't because I don't shade my models except for the hair. Use the box selection tool to select half the hair, cut with Control X, paste with Control V, rename, and repeat 
for however many symmetrical strands of hair you have except for the back if it's down. You can leave that part alone. It doesn't even have to be cut if you don't want it to be cut a bunch. For the head shape, I find that drawing the lines and coloring in a separate layer to be more convenient, but it's up to you. The nose can be elaborate, but this is a chibi. A small line will suffice. The neck will be its own piece. Piece the ears too. I always forget the ears. Eyes. Oh golly, the eyes. We will be doing plenty with eyes, so be sure to follow along carefully. Turn on symmetry. Draw the top and the bottom of the eye like you would do hair. And separate them into pieces. Same with the sclera. Cool. Those are the easy parts. If you want to make an elaborate iris, it's up to you. But drawing the iris and piecing it like you would hair is perfectly fine. If you want to use toggles for your eyes in the future, piecing the shiny or shinies and pupils separately will be best down the road. Be sure to cut and paste so that each eye has its own piece when you're satisfied. I don't typically draw eyebrows, but make sure the eyebrows are separate too. Next is the mouth. You'll want the top part of the mouth and a portion of the skin tone. Same with the bottom, the back of the mouth, the tongue, the top teeth, and bottom teeth all pieced separately. You can use both the horizontal and vertical symmetry for this. Having a bit of skin tone above and below the mouth will help with deforming all the necessary pieces so the back of the mouth doesn't show when it shouldn't. Adding head accessories isn't as elaborate as eye and mouth, but I tend to piece glasses into two layers. Great! The hard part is done! Now the rest of the body doesn't have to be too elaborate. You don't even have to cut limbs into multiple pieces. It's actually easier to deform the arms, for example, than it is to mess with its coordinates. In the body, piece where you think you'll do a lot of physics, like skirts, loose sleeves, or the torso. Step 4. Save as PSD. Great! You drew a model. Depending on the complexity, this took 3 hours minimum and you saved money on Adobe products in the process if all you wanted is Photoshop. Congrats! Now save. But Dragon, this is a Photoshop, you might say. What the heck is .kra? Are you serious that I could save to PSD? I know it's not Photoshop, but PSD files are available in the dropdown. While you could save it as .kra, only Creative can view and edit the file. And you can still view and edit PSD files in Creative if you want to, and save it as both files. Woo! Now your model is ready for rigging!